Hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to uh, present the ZDB journey. And I am Aspen. I'm an architect by training. And uh, let's just uh, start it with the presentation. So uh, let me start with the background of a zero energy building. So buildings consume 36% uh, of energy and is responsible for a great deal of carbon emissions. And it makes the sector a very critical animal in the race towards uh, to keep carbon emissions below the dangerous levels. So in principle, buildings have to be held responsible for the resources that they use, be it water, be it energy, or the materials that they use. And the trend that we see is moving towards uh, performance-based metrics and energy efficiency out of all these resources remains a very important concept. So um, the Advancing Net Zero <clears throat> project by the World Green Building Council, it has set ambitious targets that all new buildings and new infrastructure have net zero embodied carbon by 2050. And um, all the existing buildings will operate at net zero operational carbon by 2050. So in order to achieve this target, uh, net zero energy measures <clears throat> remains a key approach. And in this context, net zero energy means uh, the, the annual energy demand of the building is met through on-site renewable uh, energy available, such as the solar panels. So um, if you look into the definition and classification by the Japan Association of Smart Energy Worldwide, they have three classifications starting with uh, zero energy building ready, where uh, the building will have 50 percentage or more energy saving than the reference building. And uh, the second classification would be nearly zero energy building, where the net energy saving inclusive of the renewable energy contribution is more than 50 percentage, but has not uh, reached 100 percentage. And then the third classification is a zero energy building, where the net energy savings is 100 percentage or more. So in all of these, <clears throat> The key starting point is to look into the energy saving of the building. And then you go to uh, adopt uh, renewable energy sources to realize a nearly zero energy building or a zero energy building. So if you compare with this with the methodologies <clears throat> put forward by uh, Singapore also. So um, if you, uh, the both, both countries and have different urban contexts, um, and one of the most impactful and one of the primary steps in this journey towards a net zero energy building is to start with passive design. So what should be the approach towards a zero energy building? So um, it should be ideally defined as a building that takes advantage of passive design to minimize the energy use while retaining the thermal comfort and that generates on-site renewable energy to meet its own consumption. So it should start with reducing the energy use within the building. You can deploy passive design. Uh, you can relook into the thermal comfort design and the careful selection of material should help with the reducing the energy use within the building. And then you move to uh, look for opportunities for increasing the energy efficiency by deploying energy efficient systems or having a smart energy management system. So after you have exhausted your options to reduce the energy use and increase the energy efficiency, then you move to adopt uh, renewable energy sources that is available on site. So it should be a phased approach, uh, starting with the reducing uh, reduced energy use and moving towards an increasing energy efficiency and finally adopting a renewable energy generation. So, <clears throat> As an example of a net zero energy building in Singapore. So when, when the design team started with the design, the reference building was having uh, uh, annual energy consumption of about 1,947 megawatt per year. So uh, in their journey towards a zero energy building, they started by uh, to reduce the energy use by optimizing the envelope that yielded 18% uh, um, energy reduction when compared with the reference building. And then they uh, went out to look for uh, increasing the energy efficiency by using high efficient air conditioning system, hybrid systems, and the overall optimization and finding synergy within the different design elements. And finally, they moved to adopt uh, renewable energy and with which uh, they were able to generate within the roof of the uh, development. So to put the numbers in context, 
a uh, typical uh, energy use intensity of a university building in singapore according to the building energy benchmark report is about 3 358 kilowatt per kilowatt hour per meter square whereas this building is operating at about at an energy use intensity of about 55 kilowatt kilowatt hour per meter square so this is a net zero energy building but it is also a very highly energy efficient building so um some of the key aspects that that you should start with in your journey towards a net zero energy building is passive design strategies which is um <clears throat> which is one of the most impactful and uh, low cost or no cost strategy that can be deployed so uh, regardless of the climate um you, we should be looking into the building layout and having a compact building shape and shading the building uh, from the solar radiation by deploying horizontal or vertical shading devices as well as harvesting the daylight that is available on, on site so another important aspect in the journey towards a net zero energy building would be to relook into the thermal comfort design so most of the times um, uh, all of us design according to the set points uh, probably 24 degrees celsius uh, or similar so here i have two uh, psychrometric charts uh, those are graphics developed uh, from the cb thermal comfort tool so you can see on the left that um, a high operative temperature of 29 degrees celsius is far beyond the thermal comfort zone as highlighted in the blue but for the same uh, operative temperature of 29 degrees celsius if you increase the asp you can see that the uh, the same set of conditions is <clears throat> that falls within the thermal comfort zone so uh, thermal comfort can be uh, is holds a, a very impactful opportunity to reduce the energy use and it is important to relook into the thermal comfort uh, conditions and um, to to reap the energy efficiency benefits and uh, once you have uh, looked into uh, looked into the um, energy saving uh, reducing energy use options then you can go and deploy the energy efficiency active strategies like uh, radiant cooling panels or led lighting or having a building energy management systems so here is a um, zero energy building that we built for ourselves in kashima japan so the total floor area is about 1435 square meter for this building uh, which is spread across two stories so in overall approach <clears throat> the building has a 50.4 percentage of energy saving compared to the reference building and coming to the renewable energy aspects the building has 64.3 percentage of energy created when it is compared against a reference building so in in total the building has a net energy savings of 114.7 percentage when compared with a reference building so a little bit detail about the specification <coughs> of this building so um, insulation materials were uh, deployed on the outer wall as well as the roof and the windows were using low e double glazing unit and the agc's uh, building integrated photovoltaic panel sanjul sudare was also um, bringing in some amount of heat shielding and uh, coming to the energy efficiency part high efficiency systems were deployed starting with air conditioning and lighting and also a building energy management system was deployed that uh, integrated control system between the facilities and coming to the on site renewable energy aspect solar panels were deployed on the roof as well as the facade inclusive of the vision panel as well as the central panel so a little bit detail about the renewable energy strategy uh, as i mentioned um, solar panels were deployed on the roof and um, solar panels were also deployed on the wall agc is uh, building integrated photovoltaic panel called sudare and the spandrel panel had crystalline sets so all added together the renewable energy uh, system deployed in this building had a rated power of 98.1 kilowatt so on the right side you can see the images of the uh, vision panel where the sun uh, sudare cell was deployed 
So uh, you can see the view from the inside. Though there is a solar panel, the vision of the, is not compromised. And uh, another building that we built for ourselves in the Europe uh, is our headquarters in Europe, uh, in Belgium. The total floor radius is about uh, 10,923 square meter, uh, spread across three stories. So the energy saving, uh, this building is a nearly zero energy building. And the energy saving part comes, comes from the double skin facade deployed on this building. So the first skin, the inner skin, is a double glaze unit with a high performance glass. And the outer skin is having a movable glass louvers with a screen printing. So these louvers would automatically move according to the moment of the sun. So at any point, of, point in time, the glare is cut and overheating is reduced. And the energy generating potential of this <coughs> building where Solar panels were deployed and annual energy generated is about 200,000 kilowatt hour. And because of the virtue of the site, geothermal energy was also available, which was also de deployed. So these are some of the solutions that can help in the journey towards a zero energy building, starting with high performance glazing, building integrated photovoltaic panels, insulation materials and heat reflective durable paint. So a little bit more detail about each of these, starting with high performance glazing. So high performance glazing is uh, much needed to make the building envelope energy efficient. So um, AGC has a range of soft coat and hard coat glasses with varied uh, glazing configuration that can help with the energy saving as well as the thermal comfort intent. And um, then there is the insulation material made from the AGC raw material external. So it's a polyurethane foam that is compounded to make the insulation foam for buildings. So one good thing about this, um, um, this PU foam is that the pro in the production of which uh, the hydro uh, hydrofluorocarbon blowing agents, which is used by some of the competing materials is not used here. So it is it comes from a more environment friendly uh, production process. And uh, coming to the heat reflective durable paint, the main function of this solution is to reflect away the infrared rays that uh, falls on the surfaces of the building and thereby regulate the internal temperature. So having a solar heat reflective paint based on a fluorinated resin means the performance of the coating will remain a longer time and the and the coating itself is durable. And the maintenance is also easy. So the other solution would be a building integrated photovoltaic panel. The brand name is Sunny Walk, which is laminated glass with, uh, which has embedded solar cells. So this is a highly customizable solution according to the design intent. And based on the design, it can be deployed on canopies, walkways, uh, facade on, and skylights, and, and the different other, based on the design intent. So let me share a short video about the different uh, modules that are available. So that's about the uh, building integrated photovoltaic panel. And coming to another solution. So that is uh, helpful in retrofitting the existing buildings. So most of the times the, the older buildings or the existing buildings have a single glazing facade. 
So how to make that those fossils energy efficient? So Atos is one such solution that will help to convert the single pane windows of the existing building into a double skin, uh, in, uh, sorry, into a double glazing unit. So the advantages of using a um, Atos system is that it improves the energy efficiency of your existing facade. It improves the thermal comfort for the tenants, and it has a, a highly easy installation uh, method with, by eliminating any need for any external scaffolding, and it can be inserted from the inside of the building. So um, I have a video here to, to introduce the solution. We are constantly changing, evolving. We try to reinvent ourselves, be it through appearance or our surroundings. It helps us to improve, to progress in life. Then why don't we change the way we live? For instance, today everywhere you look, there is a glass building. It's one of the most sought after trends in construction. Then why do we feel uncomfortable in them sometimes? It's because you didn't spend enough time selecting the right glass for your space. There's a good chance that the constructors fixed a suboptimal performing glass for a lower cost, resulting in you not utilizing the full potential and advantages of glass. It's time to change this. AGC presents a revolution in retrofitting solution. AGC A Torch. This innovative technology breathes in a new life into your existing building. It makes the building more energy efficient, thereby enhancing your living conditions. All of this at a cost which is less than what would be required for a complete renovation. The installation and fitting is done according to your needs, be it during or after office hours, without disturbing the daily workflow of your business, making it an affordable investment. Since AGC A Torch is designed for a specific shape of an existing window, a thorough study of the existing building is conducted by highly trained professionals, which includes the glazing, the system and the energy performance of the building. This helps in understanding and customizing the best solutions for you and enables us to install one panel in just 30 to 45 minutes. AGC A Torch is effective in providing thermal comfort in winters. It keeps the sun's heat away and also helps in reducing the glare during summers. AGC A Torch delivers HVAC savings between 8 to 30% while reducing sound anywhere between 2 to 5 decibels. Earlier, renovating glass buildings was considered to be a difficult task. Now, with AGC A Torch, it is a simple, non-intrusive process, making it the most viable option. So don't just replace, upgrade with AGC A Torch. We are con so uh, coming to the um, uh, to the end part of the presentation. So AGC moving forward with its uh, corporate activities, it, with its uh, products and technologies, is out there to create a wide range of social values by helping to realize safe and uh, comfortable urban infrastructure, to help in realization of safe and healthy lifestyles, and to uh, contribute to the realization of healthy and secure society. So uh, in 2014, we had set an uh, ambitious target of cutting down our carbon emissions to one sixth by 2020. We are in target to achieve that number. And uh, again, this year, we challenged ourselves to be a net zero carbon company by 2050. So uh, along with our solutions, our technologies, we are also moving towards to be an uh, environment-friendly company and cutting down our carbon emissions. So that will be all from me. AGC, your dreams, our challenge. Reach out to us with your dreams and then probably we can work out to realize those challenges. Thank you. Um, I'm starting over again. So what I would like you to um, see today is, uh, or to learn today is about creep buildings, is about the company and how we, so now still needs to move. Okay, now we are going very good. Again, thanks for inviting us and thanks for the uh, previous presentation. 
great products. Um, so what I would like to show you today is how we came up with a construction system and also with a building platform um, that is simply put to uh, uh, renew the industry, the construction industry. And I'm gonna show you how we do this. So just a quick overview of my presentation. First, you would like uh, to learn a bit about Cree. I'm not sure if you hear the side noise, but it's gonna be gone in a second. Uh, you learn a bit about the system, about quality uh, matters, about our partners, about our projects, certainly the most exciting part of the presentation. And finally, I'm gonna introduce our platform and our studios initiative. So Cree was founded like 10 years ago with the target to change uh, the sustainable construction industry. We came up with a construction solution, a building solution. So I'm a construction engineer by trade um, and a group with my, including myself have invented the life cycle tower construction system. You see here on the right side, one building. This is exactly the building where I sit in here right now. You see, you might see it in my background that there's some timber involved. And as we talk about net zero, um, we also need to uh, include um, gray energy and primary energy that sits in the materials. That's why dealing with wood is very important. So a brief uh, insight into the construction system that we invented first. So this is based on a certain building grids. Uh, we heavily rely on repetition because repetition keeps the cost down and avoids mistakes. So we use glulam columns for the ones who are not familiar. This is an engineered wood product. It's laminated uh, timber. We use that for the load bearing columns along the exterior, uh, along the perimeter of the building, like the facade. Those, wall, uh, those columns come including the walls. So those walls are non-load bearing. They are delivered, including the columns to the construction site. Uh, you will see some pictures about this later on. Then there are some interior supporting structures that can be from steel, from concrete, or from timber as well. And then we've got the floor panels, which consist of glulam components, like engineered wood components, which make the beams, the load-bearing beams, and a layer of concrete, which which is a very thin layer of concrete. And we managed to put the use of concrete down by 60 to 70%. So we only use one third of the concrete as we would need in a conventional building. This is the structure behind it, but obviously if you want to build like this, you need to consider uh, the entire building as a holistic thing. That means we do not stop short uh, by uh, with looking at the mechanical and electrical systems, the interior fit out and also the exterior. The building as a whole is, uh, is being considered um, in our designs and our construction processes. So that brings me to the process itself. You might be familiar for the ones who are in construction. Um, this, uh, this conventional project, uh, project process is, is quite difficult to handle and it's subsequent and it uh, contains a lot of redundancy and uh, everyone takes the mistakes over from the, the person in the chain before. That's why we came up with a new process that needs to be implemented if you want to build with Cree, but then you are much better off because you just avoid mistakes. You do everything in early design stages. You make the decisions, you start prefabrication, and then your building goes um, goes up in, in, in an extremely short period of time. Some of the building system benefits, I mentioned prefabrication to a high degree, reduction of complexity, which also uh, avoids consequential costs from deficiencies. Nowadays, very important uh, safety and hygiene on the construction side. Imagine if you produce everything in a shop in advance, 
uh, and then use just like five workers to, to build your floors, it's, you're much better off in terms of those health uh, aspects. The superstructure is very flexible, creates wide open spaces. Um, regional added value is also um, a subject that we are very proud of. With our international network, we, uh, we enable local construction and design companies to produce those buildings just by themselves, local sources. And finally, uh, the, um, the structure plus the envelope like core and shell is a carbon negative thing with those buildings, means it stores more carbon than it emits during production and uh, implementation. Next big thing is quality for the users, of course. We create healthy and hygienic indoor environments. Um, air quality is, a, is, is something we, we uh, look very closely at and um, some of our buildings have achieved higher screen building standards with very, very low um, VOC measurements. I mean, the Green Building Council knew exactly what I'm talking about. Reduce costs of operation, of course, component quality, lowest resource consumption. I already mentioned that one third of the concrete, the rest is timber. It's easy to convert. That means it also enhances and extends uh, the duration of the use of your building. And as mentioned before, uh, some of the buildings are DGNB certified, LEED certified. Uh, there will be another one which is going to be certified to well platinum. I'm sure you're familiar uh, with that as well. And just to give you an example, there are a lot of studies about indoor health and about your workplace. And uh, there's one study I remember that if you increase productivity of your people, uh, that justifies a 15% 50, uh, higher expenses on your building. And I think that's definitely worth it. So if you ask now, how can I get such a building? Uh, just look after or just look for our international partners. We are enhancing our network. So those are some of them. We've got partners in Belgium, Germany, in Canada, in Denmark, Luxembourg, Portugal, in Singapore, in Switzerland, the United States, France, and Austria, of course. Um, there is also a partner in Japan, which we are not allowed to disclose yet, but I'm gonna show you a uh, project later on. Um, and we are also talking to a very promising candidate in Korea. So this is our activities in Asia. So as you see here on the map, we are quite global already. And this is the process, how to become a so-called licensed partner. Uh, you you approach us, then we we give a free intro, and we we want to get engaged with your CEO level, um, and then we together identify a pilot project, and through the process process of of design and building of this pilot project, uh, we transfer the knowledge that you need to do subsequent buildings. That's pretty straightforward. We have done this several times. And now let's take a look at some projects. First one I already mentioned uh, has been built in 2012. It's 1,600 square meters. You see indoor space behind me. There's not much wood on the outside, but on the inside is all exposed structural wood. By the way, this is a certified passive house. That means uh, we cut uh, um, heating and cooling energy down to 15 kilowatt hours per meter square and year and the primary energy demand of uh, below 100. So this is the most energy efficient standard that you can get on the building above, uh, on, the, on the picture on top you see um, one floor that we managed to build in just one day. So it needed just five hours and five workers plus a crane operator to build that space. And on the lower picture, you see then an example for indoor fit out. 
When we built this, we were only allowed to build four floors. We managed to approve an eight-story building for the first time in, in, in history. Another building that I had already introduced like uh, three and a half years ago when I, when I uh, had the chance to, to present at the uh, Green Bill, Hong Kong Green Building Council uh, exhibition. Um, and that was in the process then, that building is located in Singapore. It's a quite big one, but a very nice one. You, you can guess here some timber beams in the out, uh, outside corridors. So I'm going to use the laser pointer now. This area here for two building blocks up to 12 floors high uh, has been built using Cree system components that you see here. Um, timber beams on the ceiling, like prefabricated panels and also the exterior walls are made from CLT. And the beauty in here is not only the material, but also the fact that it is naturally ventilated. So there's no air condition in the classrooms. It's uh, just those ceiling fans, then uh, some shaded windows. And I've spent many hours there in, in, in site meetings and there was no cooling involved, but and we always felt like really pleasant, uh, despite of the fact that we had 30 plus degrees and like close to 90% humidity. So it's really a very well done design. Another example from Germany, a bit of smaller one but also that one here has been built in only eight calendar days, like 12, uh, eight, eight working days, like 12 calendar days was needed to create this space of 3,200 square meters of office. And you can guess that it's beautiful to work there. Another current project also in Germany, in Berlin, it's quite big, it's two building blocks, three, uh, 30, uh, 32,000 square meters. It's a rendering, it's under construction. So it's nowadays it has already topped out and the interior fit outs are in the works. This is before, this is after fit outs are going on. You realize it's always the same interior look, but the outside is totally different. That's a view into the atrium. It's gonna be a very nice place uh, put in operation by the end of this year. Another building for Siemens. So here in the center, you realize five buildings and those five buildings makes a total of 80,000 square meters. And all these areas are built with the Cree system. Here you see some pictures from the production of the wall elements, including windows, including exterior uh, facade cladding. We, for, the, for the first time, we introduced heating and cooling into the panels. So your floor heats and cools. You see some impressions from the construction side is quite huge. Building in Luxembourg, also in the making right now, it's a perfect grid, like uh, really suited, uh, really fit to the Cree system massive underground parking land is very expensive in Luxembourg you probably are familiar with this problem in Hong Kong um, so we we've got some time uh, when when they did the underground uh, uh, stories we started production of the Cree panels and now they go up in incredible speed now mentioning Japan so We've got a smaller building there, but they did a lot of testing according to like the local uh, heavy weather uh, incidents like you also have in Hong Kong to my experience, like hurry, like typhoons and and I'm not sure about earthquake in Hong Kong, but in Japan, it's, it's a big issue. So they did a lot of testing and then started building a mock-up to test the Cree system. And now they are in the process of the erection of the Cree building, the first one uh, in Japan. You see this true hybrid construction, like composite of steel, concrete, and timber, all with the aim to minimize the overall use of material. And so keep the gray energy down in your building. Another project currently ongoing in Portugal, it's hotel and student homes, also with the same system behind it. And here, 
just for the architects amongst, amongst you who might feel a bit bored by those rectangular shapes, uh, with our design and build approach, uh, you can also do odd shape building like curved. Uh, it's only a matter of repetition. You, our system allows for a high degree of repetition and that keeps the cost down and keeps mistakes out of the construction site. So let me check the time. So it's still got a bit for introducing the platform. So uh, by collaborating globally, you need some online infrastructure to ease that pro the processes and ease the collaboration. And of course, COVID uh, helped us with that. So we put a lot of efforts in the development of our platform, which is now a knowledge sharing tool. And it's also a collaboration tool. We are here talking about platform uh, version one that is currently online. So everyone can, uh, can log in there. You just go to our website and then you click the platform button and you can get access to it. It's about information sharing. It's you can engage with the headquarters here in Austria, you can collaborate with others and share your projects. There's also a marketplace where we connect you with regional suppliers of great things like uh, we have, for instance, learned uh, from Aspen. I would really like to engage with you and bring you to our marketplace with your pro products. And so we are currently in the process of creating much further usability with the platform uh, version two that's going to be um, that's going to be released uh, in later this year, like in, in, in fall this year. And this is much more multifunctional. It's more like, it's, it's, it's much like a combination of, uh, of Wikipedia, Google and, um, and, and uh, Amazon and the project space. So I don't like those comparisons so much, but in fact, it's going to be like that. So it's, it's really something where you find everything that helps you create uh, your building ideas to design and to construct them. It's not a project space uh, where you handle the project, but it's a, it's a tool that helps you to share uh, your findings, that improves the system, that enhances the global network, and so to create the greatest uh, construction community on the planet. And this um, is extremely important, I believe, because the reason why construction consumes so many resources and does so much damage to the environment and consumes so much energy is because it's an extremely fragmented indus industry. It's, it, it lacks productivity and it, lack, it lacks uh, knowledge sharing. And that's what we are about to change. And in order to do so, we have introduced Decree Studios, which is basically a learning platform, also integrated into the Decree platform uh, for planners and architects. So if you're interested, just log in. You are going to engage with respected people at Cree. You will receive access to tailored courses. Uh, it's very uh, it's very frictionless to get in there, to go through the courses, to stop a course, then to, to resume it whenever you want. So it's really a pleasure to do that. And then uh, at the end, you will know everything about Cree and, and you, you, how to implement these ideas into your projects. And I believe your clients will love that, knowing that you are a Cree expert. So feel free to engage with us and let's shape the future together. Thank you for listening and I'm curious uh, for your questions. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, thank you for having me here. Thank you gentlemen for this impressive uh, presentations. Um, today I will give you a short introduction into our daily business of Neubau Best Energy. Um, and why passive house design um, is one of the keys for decarbonization um, of cities and our general. Um, just to give an overview how we are thinking, we are thinking that energy efficiency is 
one of the keys. The development level of a civilization is measured by um, its energy use. And if we don't start to reduce our energy, we are not able to develop. Um, this is one, uh, what, one thing which drives us. Um, our headquarter is currently in uh, Vienna, in the center of Vienna, um, but we are working international. Um, we have offices in, in Beijing for the Asian part of the world and in Nur Sultan in Kazakhstan for Kazakhstan and Russia, Ukraine. So um, the rest of our resources, we are able to split in Europe and work there. It, in the last year, it focuses back more to Europe because of the COVID situation. Um, all right, we are not only focused on, on residential units, small units or, or bigger units, but um, also on um, optimization of office buildings, on high rise buildings. And some years ago, we changed to industrial buildings because they're a huge um, energy eater. And in the end, you have to think in grids. Um, that means we developed and calculated um, energy grids, uh, energy districts, plus energy districts. And this is uh, what we are doing. Um, we are a group of engineers and designers um, who are supporting developers for reaching their energy goals. We are supporting um, engineers and architects um, for reaching um, lighthouse projects. And we are um, supporting companies um, which want to develop um, highly energy efficient products. Um, next to these services, uh, we are teaching a lot. And today, we, as I, and trained more than over 800 uh, certified passive house designers in China. Um, this is one of the keys. If you spread the information, um, the people will come back and, and your could, could develop uh, projects on a different level. Um, yeah, um, to get a feeling what we are doing, um, we are not only talking about strategies for the future because um, we have enough examples to show how it can be in all climate zones. Um, starting already 2007, we earned um, impressions um, about passive houses below the social price. Um, then the worldwide first plus energy roof retrofit was built. Um, then um, worldwide first plus energy high rise building from the Technical University in Vienna. I will show it later on. Um, one of my challenging projects was China's first passive house um, in the north of China. Um, then some years later, um, first passive house, certified passive house, of course, um, in extreme cold climate in Kazakhstan. Uh, extreme cold means minus 45 in winter and plus 40 in summer, but not humid. Um, in Kazakhstan, we developed um, a whole city of over 150 buildings which are connected and sharing electrical energy, have thermal uh, storages to, to, to manage uh, efficient way to be self-sufficient. Um, next to this project, we built the worldwide first zero energy mask, uh, which needs, uh, which produces more um, money in the year to, to cover um, all building services and so on. It's a public building where everybody can go in and enjoy a highly energy efficient building and the highest comfort you can get today. And it's for free. Um, yeah, um, next projects were, for example, the first uh, Passive House Plus office building in, in South China in a humid climate, um, as well as the Passive House Museum, Passive House Plus, that's uh, already producing much more energy. Um, and um, today uh, we are struggling with uh, the worldwide first chicken hatchery. It's already ongoing, this project. Um, um, hopefully, in the end of this year, we will see some uh, pictures. Um, we optimized a hatchery where uh, 400,000 little chickens uh, were birthed every week. You, need, you know, there is a lot of energy needed for cooling, for heating, um, and, and so on. Um, quite interesting project, um, something different, but I told already we were going in um, industrial building as well. And here you have new challenges and, and new ways to think. Um, but this gives you an overview what we are doing, uh, which Lighthouse projects uh, we have already done. And today I would just try to describe you why Passive House concept if, is one of the keys. Um, yeah, um, I'm PHI, Passive House Institute certifier. Um, I'm an international certifier. That means um, I'm able to, to um, certify buildings all over the world uh, with uh, my senior experience in highly energy efficient buildings um, and um, the experience already in more than five climate zones. Um, we will find a solution. 
yeah, here are some more um, examples. Passive house is already 30 years old. This concept is over 30 years old. And it means um, the reactions where somebody is saying, okay, it's not working. We have enough examples in every climate zone. And my uh, way to think is optimizing a building is never the wrong way, right? You have to, to, to balance it, but um, optimization is one of the keys. Um, by 2050, um, more than 100 cities in, in the world uh, will have the problem that they are meeting climate uh, situations we don't know today. And 2050 maybe seems so far, but it's already just in some years. Um, sometimes it seems as it is already too late to react, but we have to react now and optimize our energy flows. Um, and that's why cities already think in, in plus energy districts. Um, plus energy districts, you know, there are a lot of topics you have to consider um, from storages, um, over transportation, um, changing um, energy, producing energy, uh, and so on. Uh, but in the end, you have to consider the energy demand um, as well. And if you don't uh, need that much energy, you don't have to produce that much energy. And this should be um, the first step, uh, which is our um, concept. Yeah, um, in the end, you have different energy sources and different energy types. Um, you have to break it down to your energy, uh, primary energy balance. Um, and here we are seeing this for a whole district. You can do this for a building itself. And um, Vienna is, I don't know, over 10 times the worldwide more, most livable city. Um, and, and we have enough examples for districts which are working on plus energy. Um, that means um, there is already um, the direction um, to, to, to achieve this. Um, energy efficiency and uh, arranging highest comfort in buildings is nothing new. Um, already um, some years before Christ, uh, Socrates um, in the Old Greece, um, tried to optimize buildings. Um, and this is a very smart concept, which counts today. Um, but um, this concept, you know, um, time changes and we need something new and um, something more modern, um, to, which fits to, to our uh, time. And for us um, to optimize a building and reach the highest indoor comfort um, is the Passive House concept from the Passive House Institute. Um, I told already, it's already more than 30 years old. And um, in the end, um, you will make for a building um, an energy balance. You have to take care of some uh, points um, and, and then you can adjust them. And I will just introduce you the five main points. Maybe some of them you've already heard. Um, these points are general. You know, um, if, if you're working in different climate zones, uh, the importance shifting a little bit. But in the end, you have to take care for these five points at least. And uh, we're talking about the building envelope. We already heard how important building envelopes are um, in cold climate um, with uh, higher uh, thermal insulation. And um, important is that we have uh, below the building as well uh, our uh, insulation. In hot climate, uh, insulation below the building could be counterproductive. Um, that means um, you have to take care about the building insulation uh, and to reduce um, the heating or cooling demand. For um, materials, um, as planner and designers, we are not telling uh, you uh, which uh, material you're, um, you have to use. Um, we are defining the quality. That means you have um, the opportunity to, to choose your um, insulation material as you want um, from, from um, cellulose, that means paper, to, to aerogel from, from spaceships, uh, which is uh, quite modern and today a little bit expensive, but um, hopefully with the time we will get more efficient um, and green um, insulations. Yeah, the next point will be um, the glazing. Glazing and, and framing, um, a huge topic, um, especially in warm climates. Um, we have to take care for shading as well. Um, you know, and um, different climate zones, different requirements um, from double glazing up to in Kazakhstan, for glazing windows, um, everything um, is able. Um, you have to balance the costs. You have to, to make your energy balance and see, does it make sense? Um, how big is the effect? Um, as the length of the modern building, we have a ventilation unit. Um, we need um, oxygen um, to, to, to live healthy and then to work um, effective. And that means um, building without a ventilation system is not up to date. Um, there are quite good uh, ventilation systems which are certified. Um, we need to have a uh, recuperation, uh, recovery of heat, of cold. 
um, of humidity to work with recirculation um, and so on, different strategies. But um, this is one of the keys um, to, to look at the services. Um, to, to get a working uh, ventilation, we need an airtight building. And this is the fourth uh, main point. Mm, air tightness in a building should be measured after uh, finishing the building envelope. And um, at the last point is, are the heat breaches, which are necessary to take care from the beginning of, of the planning. Um, sometimes, um, if you don't care about them uh, early enough, um, it's not possible to solve the heat breaches um, already. Um, if you look on this, it's quite easy and simple. Um, but in detail, um, there are hours and hours to, to make a project really efficient. Yeah, but today I will just give you an example how it could work. This is the Plus Energy building from the Technical University in Vienna and um, is a lighthouse project worldwide. And this building is producing really more energy than it needs. Um, and I will just give you an introduction. The building envelope is a certified passive house. This is the highest standard you can achieve on energy efficiency um, today. And um, yeah, um, it's a roof, it's a retrofit building in the, in the center of Vienna. That was a challenge because when you're talking about plus energy, we have to produce the energy. And here we are in the center of Vienna. That means we have to produce it only on the building. Yeah, um, if you see it, it's um, 11 floors high um, and it's still a building of the Technical University um, in the center of Vienna. Um, we have a huge um, insulation um, improvement um, in, um, in compared to, to, to the old uh, version. We, the building envelope is passive house certified. That means it's airtight and the insulation is fitted and um, the glazing shading system is included um, in this element facade. When we are going to the facade, um, um, there was already mentioned that we need energy and the easiest way is to produce energy by photovoltaics. Um, only on this building, we have around 1,600 square meters of photovoltaics. Um, you know, uh, vertical photovoltaics are not that efficient um, like um, photovoltaics on the roof, um, but um, we need every watt um, if we want to talk about real plus energy building. And when we are looking on the consumption and the energy balance of a building, you hear an overview of a regular building um, and where the energy flows. Um, and when we are talking about uh, plus energy, uh, in special of this plus energy building, we take care for every electrical consumption. That means your coffee machine, your copy machine, um, your, your PCs and so on are counted in. Um, because in this special project, the owner is the technical university, they were able to change um, and for, for more efficient um, devices. And when you have a regular office building, um, you're around at 450 kilowatt hours per square meter a year, a primary energy demand. And then um, when you are aiming, aiming for, for plus energy, you have to do a lot of work, not only the optimization of the building to reduce heating, cooling, humidification, dehumidification uh, energy, um, but optimization of every electrical um, device. And we did a lot of work there. Um, you see the effect. And it's very important um, because of, um, it's a building of technical university. There's a monitoring running and these numbers um, could be proved. You know, um, the first two years are still there to, to um, regulate and optimize the building because you never know. It's, it's not possible to turn on a building and it's working 100% efficient. Uh, you need one summer, one winter to, to get a better uh, configuration. And today we could say, uh, right, it's plus energy, um, including all electrical devices. Um, and when we are looking for plus energy, we have to produce it. And, you know, um, this building has not, an, not more space for photovoltaics. This was the maximum of space for producing electrical energy. And if we didn't do this um, optimization, um, um, we will not able to say it's a plus, real plus energy building. That means optimization is back again, uh, one of the key, key roles um, for the future. Yes, um, just to get an um, impression, um, one of these 9,600 um, devices um, are motion sensors. You know, motion sensors, you're coming in a room, light is going on or ventilation is going on. Um, the regular um, motion sensor um, needs around one to two watt standby, 24 hours. In an office building, you have around five to 600. Um, that means you need a lot of electricity, which you don't have. 
you have to produce this electricity first. And to optimize this stuff um, makes a huge role. Um, and you know, every electrician guy will say, two what? It's nothing, forget it. Um, but if you count it times 600, um, it's important to optimize this as well. And I just want you to show up uh, how important uh, efficiency and how deep efficiency can go. Um, there are um, motion sensors which need 0 0.05 um, uh, watt standby, and they're working the same. Yes, um, to get an overview about one of these highly energy efficient buildings, uh, what have been done there, um, Pacifal's building envelope as a basic, because without this, it's not possible to optimize it that deep. Um, we have um, ventilation units with heat recovery, humidity recovery, a double rotary um, units. Um, of course, the air tightness, uh, proved air tightness and measured air tightness. We are uh, producing energy by um, photovoltaics, electrical energy, and the um, solar uh, shading system is implemented in the, in the facade modules. Um, there is a free cooling um, um, system. In Vienna, we have the, the nice um, opportunity to, to, to cool at night when the temperature drops down. Um, in humid hot climates, this is not possible. Um, but you know, um, if you build in different climate zones, you have to check um, your surrounding and, and, and try to use the natural energy as most as possible. Um, yeah, um, if you have to cool um, by, by electricity, use highly energy efficient devices. And one of the highest um, is, is with a sphere of nine. That means with one kilowatt electricity, you will get nine kilowatt coolness. Um, to distribute um, all over for heating in heating is in business uh, in, in business or offices um, office buildings um, not the huge point uh, because um, in a highly energy efficient building um, there is already enough heat from the people um, that means sometimes you have to cool um, in, in winter as well but in this case we are we have cold climates in Austria as well um, in cold days, um, we are using the heat from the servers in the basement to heat the whole building, and it's enough. Yes, um, just to give you an impression uh, what uh, we are working, and you see it's a holistic impression um, how really energy efficient buildings have to work. Um, it's not enough time to, to go uh, more in detail, um, but I hope I could give you an overview um, that there are already enough um, buildings uh, to show up um, how to make it efficient in every climate zone. And yeah, hopefully um, there were some questions to answer. Thank you very much.